I'm so blessed and honored to have such a powerful and beautiful goddess that I have so much respect for. Her name is Eden Sky. She's a galactic visionary teacher, mover and shaker, an incredible human on the planet doing amazing things. She has dedicated her life to bringing the life-changing wisdom of galactic time to humanity. She's been creating an incredible calendar, a visionary uh, calendar that, you know, is a new paradigm way of having a relationship with time. I have known Eden Sky for, I think it's been over 25 years. Uh, we were roommates at a, uh, a suburban urban kind of hippie commune house full of seven amazing women in Portland called the Goddess Palace and that was really the beginning of my awakening the goddess within and Eden Sky was a big and pivotal part of my awakening journey and realizing my potential and my power and really stepping upon that path together Eden Sky, myself, and all the amazing women that lived at the Goddess Palace. I have so many memories of us having large groups of like 30 women in the house having goddess circles of, of women that were ages 12 to 80 and how much we all learned from each other and how much wisdom came from that experience. So Eden Sky is a very important part of my life and a very important and special person that I know. But I asked her to be part of this summit as she really is the goddess of the cosmos. She has, you know, activated and woke up at a very young age and jumped onto her soul path purpose and has been bringing this new paradigm way of having a relationship with time which is so important and so magical. It's so good to have you with us today, Eden. It is an honor to be here. And I have so much celebration um, and gratitude for our continuum, our 25 years of knowing each other. Um, and I'm just delighted um, to be part of this Awakening the Goddess Within Summit. So thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. There's no way I could do this summit without you being part of it. <laughs> it would be wrong. <laughs> so I'm so honored and so excited to have you here. And so my first question is, what does the goddess mean to you? And I know it's a big question, but I really want to hear what you have to say. So what does the goddess mean to me? Um, it is a vast question and there's a lot of things I could say and where I was intrigued to see your invocation of the goddess of the cosmos. And I really like that. And I thought, well, that really resonates with me because I'm really passionate about cosmic connectivity. So I thought, well, what does it mean to me to be awakening as a goddess of the cosmos? So what I wanted to share about that was to me, that is a, an ongoing study um, and experience of, of connecting my womb space with my heart, with my higher self, and uh, focusing on the alignment between these three centers. And as we know, as women, our womb space um, and, and, the, and directly connecting our womb to the earth and opening to that amazing creative power that we embody. And we know that our womb has a totally different intelligence than our minds and a, a totally different sensory realm. And there's so much power and wisdom to drop into our wombs and connect to the earth. And for me, as I've been doing it for several years, there's just more and more and more just like relaxing into that and feeling my womb directly linked to the earth and then my heart as we know, our, our hearts um, inherently feel the unification and the oneness of all of life. Our hearts, our hearts live in that vibration. 
And therefore our hearts naturally emanate compassion for all living beings and that self-love vibration. And then our, our cr opening our crown to the heavens, to the cosmos, to the, to the cosmic intelligence, to the vast realm. So for me, the, the, the higher self is, is, is found when I open up my crown. To me, that's how I access <clears throat> the higher self. So to me, that's what it means to awaken as a goddess of the cosmos is to bring in that alignment. And it's something that I like to do whenever I remember, sometimes several times a day, because it's really powerful and it really, uh, really creates a, a multidimensional um, connection for me. So beyond just, you know, wh whatever task I'm doing, I can like invoke that. And then I feel like it um, just brings a really powerful vibration, uh, a positive vibration. Yeah. Thank you. I love that so much. It's so true. And, um, you know, I'm just thinking about memories of us as well, going to yoga class and um, we'd be running late and we'd play with, uh, with time. We would always end up manifesting being right on time every time we were running late. And I remember that being one of our like superpowers that we would do. And so I've always thought of you as this timekeeper that knows like the superpowers of the goddess and time. And that's why I call you the goddess, of the cosmos as well. And so I was hoping that you could share a little bit more about the calendar and how it links in with the goddess and specifically to the 13 moons as well. Yeah, so I just want to make a comment, this, this idea or this experience we had of like bending time. Um, one thing that I discovered, um, you know, because I found this calendar system when I was 18, or I should say this, this galactic calendar system found me. Um, and, you know, one of the things I would do that I still do to this day that I would recommend for people to try out um, you know, if you, you have somewhere you need to be on a linear clock time, um, first of all, what I recommend is make a distinction between don't actually don't hurry. If you hurry, you will find that you're making mistakes and you're clumsy and then things end up taking longer. So actually don't hurry, be efficient, be efficient, be on task, be calm, don't hurry. So to something to contemplate. Um, and the other thing is like what I learned, what I started doing was if so we say we had to go to yoga class, then I would say, okay, so we have supposedly this amount of linear time and then just don't look at the clock, just drive there, go there, do there, be calm, but don't look at the clock because when we look at the clock, it create, you know, especially when we're trying to get somewhere on a certain clock time, it can create so much anxiety and get us all tripped out. Um, so just something to, to try out. Um, I found it is really helpful. And that's, you know, so there's so many things I could say, but that is, um, that is one piece that actually does tie in with the balancing of the masculine and feminine energies, right? Because we all know that the, the new paradigm that's emerging, the awakening on planet Earth, we, we all know that it's about a balance between masculine and feminine. And we all know that that's about a balance within ourselves and in the world, right? So this, this, this we all know. But the thing that is often overlooked is how our relationship to time and calendars has anything to do with that, right? Um, so that's what I've been really passionate about is understanding that, that um, there's a natural timing frequency. And like we were talking about the ability to synchronize that there's actually a, we actually all have telepathic capacities um, to be in the right place at the right time and to receive telepathic communications and to transmit them. This is actually true. Uh, I've experienced this for 25 years, but what I learned from my teacher, Dr. Jose Arguez, was that the reason that we don't have our telepathic um, capabilities actualized 
is because we put the concept of time outside of ourselves. So we look at the clock and say that that's time. And, you know, we eat by the clock and sleep by the clock and work by the clock. And in, we're, when you really think deeper about it, um, the clock is not time. This is what I learned. I had to, I had to learn this from my teacher because, because in, in, in our modern, you know, reality, we all just assume that the clock is time. And we assume that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is time and January, February, March. Um, but the reality is there's a whole other dimension uh, to time of the natural timing frequency um, that we can experience. And here's where the, the balance of the masculine and the feminine comes in is that we don't think about it, right? But we actually have been conditioned with a totally linear sense of time, linear reality, which is, a, which is masculine. And in re if we really think about it, we live in a spiral galaxy. Everything in nature, its patterns of growth is to spiral. Um, our lives are not linear. Um, so by conditioning our mind in this linear sense of time, we're like, we're really cutting off this whole non-linear dimension, which is actually the natural timing frequency that's actually also connected to our bodies, to the earth, to the cosmos. And so, so when we uh, awaken beyond linear time and we awaken to the non-linear spiraling order, this is where we start to bring in the feminine balance. Um, and so the... <clears throat> Also, the, the idea of, of, you know, being so um, directed outer, time is outside of ourselves, whereas it's about also reclaiming our inner sense of time. Um, <clears throat> and this is, this is part of the, the feminine uh, dimension and reclaiming the quality of our time, not just the quantity and being fixated in duration. So I can talk more about this because it really ties in specifically to uh, the calendar that I've been teaching in regards to the power of 13. So I'll let you say something, Shemet, and then I can come back to that and talk about the power of 13 because that's really significant. Yeah, it really is. I'm so excited about this. I'm so excited. So when we lived at the goddess palace, we would have these beautiful woman circles. And I remember there would be like 30 women um, together from ages of 12 to I think um, our elder was 70 something. And I remember her talking about 13 was the number of the goddess and 13, that there's actually 13 moons, not 12 and that the 13th is the goddess and so it's very significant and i'm going to hand the baton back to you to to go into it more fully because i feel that this is part of the redemption of the feminine spirit as well which is my next question so what does the redemption of the feminine spirit mean to you and then bringing the 13 into it as well because there's so much you know 13 is a bad number and like there aren't like uh, 13th floors in some countries and yeah, there's a lot to be said here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> it's, it's a really um, powerful topic and the, the redemption of the feminine. Um, and for me, it, it's, it's, it has to do with inside of myself, but um, you know, obviously our external world is also greatly out of balance, but for me to, start understanding where has my own inner masculine subjugated my inner feminine and that looks like for me um you know being really focused on doing going accomplishing you know boom 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 um action 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 and so for me the redemption of the feminine or the awakening of the feminine or the bat the rebalancing has everything to do with really um making a commitment to learning how to root into my beingness, learning how to rest into my beingness and all of the beautiful yin qualities that we, we all embody, regardless of our gender, the, the yin qualities of nature, um, and to learn how to really root 
in that. And then from that place to take that directed, inspired action, right? Because we need the balance. Um, so to me, that, that's, a, that's an aspect of it. And then to talk a little bit about the 13. Um, so, so, you know, if we look historically, right? So my teacher, Jose Arguez, he talks about how the current 12 month calendar is uh, directly from the uh, male Babylonian priests that intentionally wanted to suppress uh, the power of 13. And the question is, well, why? And the reason is because 13 embodies the power of the moon. It embodies the power of the divine feminine. It embodies the power of the spiral. Um, and so, as you said, 13 has become unlucky, taboo, evil. Um, it goes so far as um, uh, in 1572, Bishop DeLanda went to the Yucatan to study the Maya and study their time science. And he was with them for a long time. And at a certain point, he discovered that, and, and, he, and he made the statement, they must be devils because they know too much and they worship the number 13. And so from that point, he, they actually went on to attempt to destroy all record of the ancient Mayan time science. It was very really heartbreaking actually um and it was all based on this this fear of the power of 13 and, and, the, and the reverence for 13. meanwhile if we look um uh, pre-history the way of tracking the year cycle was 13 months of 28 days each plus one day and it's the perfect harmonic natural way to track the year so then we have the solar year tracked in the 28, which is bringing the lunar energy. So now we have a solar, lunar, masculine and feminine balanced way of tracking the year. So this is how uh, prehistory, the, the year cycle was tracked before, uh, before entered in what we currently have right now. So I don't want to say too much because I can keep talking about it, but just super briefly, what we have right now is the Gregorian calendar. January, February, March, you know, today is January 24th, Sunday, 2021. Well, where does that come from? It's named after Pope Gregory the 13th uh, from the Roman Vatican. And that is this Gregorian calendar is actually just a modification of Julius Caesar's calendar, which is just a modification of the earlier Roman calendar. So why do people all around the world of all cultures um, and all countries and all languages and all religions all follow Pope Gregory's calendar and schedule our lives around it. So Jose feels that the power of 13 was, was specifically suppressed. So part of what we do with the, with the galactic calendar, and as I've been continuing the teachings of Jose Arguez, is to now all around the world, we once again follow a 13 month, 28 day calendar. Yeah. <laughs> It just the, just the resonance of that and the feeling of that is so different. And, you know, everyone that's listening right now, I lived with this woman for, what was it, three and a half years, I think? Yeah. And living by the Mayan, well, we called it the Mayan calendar back then. It's now called the galactic calendar, and I'll have Eden Sky talk about that as well. But I remember it was such a different energetic a different way of being. It was really following that natural, those natural cycles of really honoring our energy. And it was, it was pure magic. So yeah, I'm so happy that you're here talking about this, Eden. Yeah, so it, it is, it is actually a way to, um, you know, that's why I am so passionate about this galactic calendar system and why I've been creating them. Um, it's just a total honor because it, I've found it to be totally life-changing to, and to be able to share this gift with people all around the world who are also all around the world activating what we call galactic culture, which means that you know we're all we're all acknowledging that 
we are all here as children of the earth. We are all terrestrial citizens, but we are also uh, we are also galactic citizens. We are also, you know, our earth itself, Gaia herself is a member of a vast galactic community, right? So we are all actually taking our places as terrestrial citizens and as galactic citizens. And this is part of the awakening of the new paradigm as we are expanding our context of what our home is, of what our responsibilities are, as well as our capacities um, to, our, to awaken our multidimensional powers um, and our multidimensional creativity. And that's one of the things I'm really passionate about is when we, when we free our mind out of artificial time frequency, out of only looking at the clock and only referring to the 12 month calendar, right? This just keeping us stuck in linear time. There's no, and it's, it's also a, an old patriarchal program. It's a, the, if you really look at it and I won't go on about it, but truly it's an, it, the calendar has been used as an instrument of control with, with a brutal history of conquest and has let how has now led to the global colonization of our mind in regards to what time is whereas this new paradigm of time which is often overlooked by all the other facets of, of how the new paradigm you know is awakening right because currently we have oh we have you know new paradigm holistic you know sciences and education and economics and how to raise your children and restorative agriculture and people are awakening on like so many levels understanding ourselves as you know our subtle bodies as energy beings how to heal our inner children but there's this often totally overlooked central piece of our relationship to time and the calendar we use and how that directly affects our minds and our lives and our world but the thing is you don't you don't experience it until you get a contrast. So we're all so used to linear artificial mechanical time that we don't know that we're missing this whole other dimension, which is um, what I, which is why I'm so excited about this because it bring it, like you were saying, it brings in the natural timing frequency, which brings in magic, which brings in accelerated synchronicity, telepathy, and reclaiming the sacred essence of time, reclaiming the feminine spiral. And the calendar is awesome because it's just super simple also. Like I love teaching it to children. They totally understand it. It's just simple color number symbol patterns. It's not all mental. It's simple embodied repeating patterns that then we get to, we get to have a qualitative, spiritual inspired focus for every day. So now every day, and this system has a galactic timing frequency, not just Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, January, February, March. So today is called red lunar dragon. And then the next day is white electric wind and then blue self-existing night, yellow overtone seed, red rhythmic serpent. So there's this 260 different galactic frequencies that we get to play with time and it, it, it take our lives as a creative adventure. Because the last thing I'll say, well, in this topic, well, in this moment, I will keep talking about it, but the idea is that time is art. So the old paradigm is time is money and we're always running out of time and there's never enough and we're constantly stressed. Time is money, linear time. Time is art. Life is art. Yeah, I've always loved that. I love that. I remember the Planetary Art Network and all the different expressions of art and creativity that we all did as a tribe. And those were some of the best years of my life and living in the energy of natural time with seven beautiful goddesses. It was, it was a very special time for all of us. Um, and just to you know, talk about the galactic signature, so I'm a white galactic dog. And I remember at the time going, why can't I be something cool like a wizard or something? You know, why am I a dog? And I, I'm a cat person, I had a cat, you know? But now, you know, I have a white dog and I love her so much. She's like my soulmate. 
And, you know, the white galactic dog, their companions of destiny, their love, their heart centered, they bring people together. And that's exactly what I do. And that's exactly who I am. So that frequency, that vibration of my galactic signature is spot on. And I actually find it more in resonance with my soul and my heart, even more than my astrology sign. So I love that Eden Sky. I love it so much. It's so powerful. And you can decode, you know, I've decoded my children and my husband, and then you can find out how you all fit together and your resonances and your frequencies and how to best support those relationships. And it, it's so beautifully done. And Eden Sky has been so kind to offer up a teaching, a video, if you sign up for the All Access Pass, you'll get her teaching. She's, she's put, to, I'll have her explain it in more detail, but she's put together a teaching that goes into showing you exactly how to decode your galactic signature. So would you like to talk a little bit more about that, Eden? Yeah, thank you for bringing that up, the, the galactic signature. And so what it is, is that actually every day and every person has a galactic signature, a unique galactic frequency. So we can find out our own personal galactic signature. So I'm a red self-existing Skywalker. And then every day has a galactic signature, a distinct galactic frequency. And these are, this is a way to understand ourselves um, understand a facet of our cosmic identity or understand another facet of our divine design. Um, and they're, they're simple. They're, it's not as complex as astrology. They're simple, but they're mathematical codes that offer vast comprehension by just by contemplating them. And, um, and for me, like it's, um, you know, after 25 years working with these same simple, seemingly simple frequencies, I could keep learning things and keep having revelations um, that because they're, they're very deep, they're very vast, they're representing uh, the harmonic architecture of existence. So there's always things to learn. Um, so yes, so you can, uh, I did make a video to show you how easy and fun it is to just go right to our website and then you put in your birthday and then in the video i show you how you can directly enter into the flow of this fourth dimensional galactic synchronic time and find out the energy that you embody and then from there understand these simple patterns that underlie the galactic timing frequency and understand the 13 tones of creation, the 20 solar tribes and understand. And then you can actually come to the decoder and you can check out any day and you can actually follow the calendar just through the decoder. Um, but I want to say one more thing is that the, the reclaiming the power of 13 um, is so is so important because it, it, and by working with this calendar system, we can consciously go through this spiral every 13 days. There's a 13 day cycle and a 13 month cycle. So we can consciously spiral and synchronize our own human journey with nature's unfolding creative process of the spiral and free out of this linear third dimensional reality into this higher dimensional reality which supports all of the ways that we're growing and evolving and opens all new vistas of, of comprehensions and creativity and inspiration. Mm. Thank you, Eden Sky. Thank you. And I think you've already touched upon my next question, but I'll ask it anyways, because you might have something um, interesting well i know you'll have something interesting to say you always do <laughs> but what does the awakening mean to you and I, I i think you did say a lot about that already so just just a little bit more of what you want to share about the awakening maybe specifically from the third dimension to the fifth dimension Um, well, there, yeah, it's a big topic. Um, what immediately kind of just pops in my mind is 
I think um, a really fundamental part of our awakening to ourselves as multidimensional beings, you know, because I think there's the facet of, of awakening in terms of, you know, being, being responsible to the third dimension and, and the way that we steward the earth and the kind of decisions that we make. Um, and, you know, that's, that's really underway and more and more people are making these conscientious uh, just lifestyle decisions. That's a huge facet of it. But then there's this whole other dimension of our multidimensional awakening and more of what is in the invisible realm and the immeasurable realm. Um, and I think that that is a, a, you know, a huge part of it is the, the, the internal experience um, and uh, understanding how to, to value um, the, the, the power of our, of our intentions, the power of our perceptions and of our beliefs and how, while seemingly invisible, how those things actually uh, are magic. That's actually how we are all wizards is in how we actually are perceiving reality and perceiving ourselves and perceiving our world. And so I think part of it is about really owning uh, the creative power of our, of our consciousness and of our, of our perceptions um, and really being aware of, um, you know, to, to nourish this part of ourself and really to keep our, keep our, you know, keep ourselves in check with where we're putting our consciousness, where, what kind of intentions are motivating us and to, to as much as possible, always have an altruistic intention to as much as possible, really connect and, 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 and contemplate and, and open to the earth, to Gaia as our, our living, our living home and really like open to that, feel that and really to connect to the cosmos, to the galaxy, to the universe, to this unfathomable vastness that we live within. And then to really like understand that we ourselves are that. We, you know, we are all these living antennas of energy, of connection with the earth and the universe. And to as much as possible, like be aware of that and to not get caught up in, 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 in some of the mundane things and the da, 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 like that's all great. But, but I found that we can do that simultaneously. We can get everything done. We need to, to do and be in harmony in the third dimension and also maintain this awareness because it, it opens so much more of our capacities. That's why I call you the goddess of the cosmos. <laughs> Ah, oh, so um, another big question, if you could say anything to humanity right now with, you know, all the struggles, all the tribulations, we're in a global pandemic, like it's kind of intense times. Some people think the world's ending. Some people think we're in the apocalypse, like there's a lot going on. And so if you could say anything to humanity to help, what would it be? <laughs> Yeah, I would say that um, we are we are absolutely in a very potent, very transformative time. No question, absolutely unprecedented. Everyone knows this and sees this and feels this. Uh, I myself um, have been aware of some of these huge challenges that we are now facing. That I first learned of them 25 years ago, and all of these things are really coming to pass right here and now in this moment. Um, so it's, a, it's a very challenging time and we all know that challenges are what strengthen us. We know that challenges bring growth. Challenges are part of the, the, the natural order, part of the way existence empowers us ultimately. And so within this understanding of how challenging these times are, uh, first, to have tremendous, tremendous compassion, tremendous compassion for what everyone is going through everywhere. And, and for me, it's been um, you know, really important to, to feel that connectivity of our human family in these times. And any moment that, uh, you know, that we are feeling centered and calm and happy, 
just send that out, send that out, send that out because all of our little drops of positivity and love and joy, they do affect uh, the, the, the energetic uh, ocean that we are all swimming in. They, they are real. Um, and so what I would say is that what, what, I'll, what I would also add is that, um, you know, in these challenging times when there are so many people who are feeling fear, um, that if we are able to access faith, um, that is a really powerful antidote. Um, faith, for, and for me, what I mean by that and my experience of that is faith in the divine orchestration in the benevolent mystery which holds us, uh, which is beyond our rational mind. And I have a lot of compassion for all the fear circulating, and I feel that much more responsible to, to summon my connection to believing in and knowing and perceiving the divine orchestration of, of the benevolent mystery and putting that out into the field. And really what came to me when this, this first started, it was a very clear invocation that I would like to share, which said to me very clearly, was that I am here to be a conscious instrument of the ongoing victory of love, the victory that is already underway and the victory that is beyond appearances. So that's really important that it's beyond appearances. It's beyond appearances. So that's what I'd like to offer um, for any of us that can resonate with that, that beyond appearances, there is this benevolent orchestration playing out, that we are being purified as a human family, that there is so much shedding, so much transforming, so much growth and strength happening. And yes, tremendous amount of difficulties, absolutely, personally and planetarily, but that we are on a journey that is being guided by a loving force. Mm, I love that, Aiden. I love that so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. And where can we find your calendars? Are they, can we order them directly from your website? Yay, yes. So we have our galactic calendars. So they feature amazing visionary art. And then they have a whole guidebook that tells you exactly how to enter into the galactic frequency of every day. And yes, you can order them on our website, which is 13moon.com, 13moon.com. And then um, I make these calendars with my husband and my son, and then my son and I ship them out all around the world. So we would be delighted um, to, yeah, if you want to check them out. And also on our website is where you can go and hit decode your birth date and find out what your personal galactic signature is. Yeah, and I highly recommend doing so. It, it's I love supporting family-run businesses, and um, you know that not only is this a family-run business, but you're really truly doing your soul path purpose work. And I've watched you for you know over 25 years that I've known you, Eden Sky. You know, walk your walk, talk your talk. You're authentic. You're the real deal. There's no spiritual ego. You're just so clear and so guided and led by what you believe in. And I'm just so, so honored to know you and to have you in the summit. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. And definitely for everyone that's listening, definitely, um, you know, sign up for the all access pass so you can get this wonderful goddesses, um, teaching about how to decode your galactic signature as well. And we're going to do some backstage talk. So more coming soon. Namaste. So, thank you so much, Matt. Thank you so much. And just want to re remind everybody. So just check it out. Time is art. How does that make you feel? Life is art and connect in with your natural rhythms. Realize that clock is not time. The clock is just a clock yeah. open to your spiraling nature your higher dimensional self and i want to say we say in la which means i am another yourself <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, in the cash. <laughs>